fabulous. Um, I want to thank, um, I think, the organizers, uh, those who've been thinking about this for quite a while, um, for reaching out and engaging with me um, and inviting me to participate. Um, I can uh, spend a lot of time telling you about my own research career, uh, my background. Um, I have had a, a slight change in a uh, job title um, where I'm now um, Deputy Director of RNI System Diversity and Security. I could talk about all of that. I could talk about UKRI and what is it it's involved in and, and, and various different things. But we have, we have hours for that. We have more time for that at, at another, at another um, juncture. Um, what I really want to do now is, is more or less just, just think with you. Um, I think about the challenges uh, that are in front of the Knowledge Equity Network, but also really try to maximize this opportunity. What does this ultimately give us? Um, and I, in thinking about what I was going to say today, I spent some time going back to the sort of draft documents and really thinking about that sort of um, collective creativity, co uh, statements like global collaboration um, uh, and shared community, um, uh, open and equitable. These, these all feel like they are tangible, real things. Um, and uh, and I, was, I was very impressed and um, quite pleased today to, to hear so much critical, really interesting conversations um, from radical collaboration to, to thinking about um, these questions around infrastructure and, uh, and co-design um, and co-commitment. Um, and this brings me to, I think, the thing that probably is the most central for me. Um, <clears throat> now, I know the title of our session, and we could actually probably spend a lot of time talking about um, overcoming the particular barriers uh, or various different forms of inequalities within uh, higher education. Um, but that is really focusing on the outcomes um, or somehow down the line um, because I can't get over the fact, uh, really thinking it from the provocation of Gino, um, about we've got to actually think about this thing. What is this network? How will this network actually function? And what would it, what would it do? Um, and the reason I'm spending time talking about this is because, mainly because I've become obsessed with structure and infrastructure. I've been really thinking quite a lot about the different things that we create, the ways we try to bring folks together. Um, and then we don't necessarily attend to what I call the piping. We don't change our processes. We don't change our funding mechanisms. We don't change our governance structures. We don't change how the meetings are, are even conducted. We don't change how the setup is, is, is there. We don't, we, don't, we don't change any of that, but we still expect to have some sort of radical outcome at the end, even though we are pushing things through a process that ultimately reifies various forms of hierarchy and various forms of dislocation um, and disempowerment. So my radical challenge to all of you will be, how will we make sure, or anyone make sure, that the Knowledge Equity Network is built on a foundation of really examining quite critically its processes and protocols, um, how it actually sets up its meeting structure, who gets to contribute and interact, and what does that actually look like, the functional aspects of this, not jumping to the hope, and the, which is beautiful, and the various things at the end, but actually the work itself. Because there's something quite troubling to me when the work is not attended to and everyone is trying to remain focused on the outcome, but yet people are not flourishing in that work. They're not feeling that radical transformation. They're feeling extracted from or they're feeling exploited um, or they're feeling in some ways disempowered. Um, I don't believe that is any of the attention of the network at all. But that is an extremely radical thing, to actually start to really critically examine um, how people got here, uh, the mobility and movement of various different types of people. What did the contracts look like for the security guards, for the catering services, um, for, for the cleaning services? Really actually starting to think in that big system infrastructure network way, as opposed to thinking it's all about creating a nice safe document that describes what we might do within a, in a, a particular location. Um, so what could these structures of change look like? Um, how would that uh, radical transformation actually come, 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 come to pass? Um, so that means we need to think about a few things. One quite critical for me is the ethics of care. Who's thinking about that eth ethics of care of people engaged within that network? Um, those contributing, those helping to support, those helping to build, the team back there keeping connected to the folks who are online. 
uh, this beautiful world of hybrid, we would, we would be lost without the, 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 the set of IT support. But do they ever get an acknowledgement uh, or a recognition for the ways that they're helping to keep these types of networks alive, right? Um, and the, the same of thinking about a whole set of places that were able to open up during the midst of the, the, the sort of darkest days of COVID. Um, and that meant a lot of people who were doing health and safety type of work to keep uh, accesses and spaces alive. They were critical to allowing people to come in and to function um, and to interact, especially the folks that had to do that um, because that's the nature of what their roles were. Um, so again, the ethics of care starts to expand this, so, this circle of radicalism much, much wider, as opposed to thinking about it from a narrow perspective of who might be involved. Um, and that means doing things like, I'm sure folks within the network who are thinking about this, about ethical partnering. What does that actually entail? What is that? How do you build that? And how do you make sure that the types of partnering that you're set up are not transactional? Um, in terms of actually somebody has to get something from somebody else to engage in that process. And what do you do when that is something that people want um, and they want to move forward? Um, and at the root of this is that real critical question for me is just collaboration. What is just collaboration? We've talked about just transitions. There have been people who've been writing about just sustainability. Um, there's this really interesting kind of dynamic of thinking about justice uh, or reparative aspects or even repair. But what is just uh, collaboration, just partnering, so that we can actually think about infusing the network with those sets of tenets and those sets of values. But again, not just focusing on what the outcomes might be, not just focusing on the shiny things that might be announced and people's declarations, but actually in the work itself um, in terms of moving forward. Uh, if this feels like a bit of everyday um, radical acts, it is. It's living that as lived theory. Uh, really having the network have the lived theory to be able to engage in this work and really thinking about that and being very forthright about what that could possibly be in these sets of exchanges and interactions um, with various folks. So that's my provocation, um, I think, as we move into thinking about some of the particulars moving forward is I am a strong comp uh, proponent of collaborative practice, co-design, co-commitment. But how do we do that in, in atmospheres and spaces and, and in various different domains where, where inequity um, and, uh, and um, division runs rampant in various ways? Well, how do we do that? How do we actually move ourselves forward um, in a way that recognizes all of that, but ultimately wants to try to build and infuse the network with this radical potential um, and this radical change? So hopefully, my set of uh, provocations added to Geno's, I think lays the foundation in front of you that starts to ask a lot of questions about representation, that should ask a lot of questions about identity, um, should ask a lot of questions around how this will ultimately work and be infused with that, that hope and that possibility. But also I think the, what the model of doing this would actually do um, in terms of creating a, a platform or a space for others to move forward. Um, and on that note, it's over to you.